Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to my lapidary shop. My name is Taylor and today I'm gonna to be sacrificing an agate for science. This one right here. So normally when I cut open agates, I cut them one time and you get a reveal of the cut face, but this is where the sacrificing the agate comes in. I'm gonna cut that agate three times in different directions so that we can see how the bands form and look from different cut placements. So if this was a normal cutting session, I would cut this agate right in through there and show you the reveal and it'd be hopefully amazing, but not today, three different ways. We're gonna start by cutting it in through here just like that, and then I will hold it and cut it again right in through here, and then it's gonna be really funky because there's gonna be a bunch of cut places and it's gonna have to like hold it all over the place. Cut it again right in through there. And then once we're done with that, I'm gonna try my best not to look. We will look at it together. We'll look at it each way, and it gives a really unique look to inside the stone, how if you cut it in different ways, you get different reveals. So let's fire up my saw and we'll start cutting. Well, it's definitely an agate because that was really, really hard to cut. <laughs> and because it took so long to cut, I'm like thinking about stuff while I'm cutting it. Like, what if there's no bands inside? What if this, what if it's all quartz? It's not quartz, but what if it's not good? And I'm like, well, we've made it this far. <laughs> so you never know what's gonna be inside. And either way, we're gonna get to see it and how it looks from different cut orientations. I hope it's cool. The cuts were really awkward. I didn't get any peaks. I was like closing my eyes as I was trying to put them back together. So let's see how it looks and how it looks from different cut placements. And getting this thing together is almost harder than the cutting process, but I'm gonna try to show it to you as we cut it with the first orientation. And, oh, it's a geode agate. That is so cool. All right, I'm happy with that. Really, really happy with that. <laughs> That's so crazy. Okay, so that's the first one. Looks like that. Oh, golly, this is a nightmare. <laughs> then, oh, golly. It's like a puzzle, something. Anyway, here's the next one. It looks very similar, I will say. We could have, we probably could have got one with different bands that got a little bit different outcome, but it really just is what it is. Um, but let's do this last one, like this. Yeah, they all kind of look similar. So sacrificing an agate for science. With this agate, it's not always gonna be like this, right? But with this one specifically, I think if you cut it any which way, you would have got, is this right? Don't mind me just trying to put this puzzle back together here. <laughs> As I was saying, I think with any which way that you cut this agate 
specifically, you would get the same results. But it's really, really cool being able to see how the bands flow throughout the cuts like this. It's kind of funky. I know we didn't get like the most perfect cut because they had to cut them at different times, but you know, this is actually like a really, really beautiful, beautiful agate. This is a Brazilian agate, Brazilian geode agate, I must add, but really cool seeing how, man, did I, I think I got some of these pieces mixed up. That doesn't look right, does it? I think it's this one right here, maybe. Man alive. I don't know. <laughs> this is embarrassing. Anyway, <laughs> I think I think it's really cool getting to see kind of how the agate bands come through like that from here to here. And this is a good example of if you cut an agate and you maybe are doubting yourself on your cut placement, sometimes it truly doesn't matter. 100% doesn't matter. But I will say, if you have an agate that looks like this, we got quartz, we got water level bands, floater bands inside here. You cut it like this. We get water level bands like this. You cut it like that, you're not gonna get water level bands. You're gonna get this floater at a different banded formation with bands around the outside. You're not gonna get that. So it's not always like that where it looks the same around. It's kind of unique. I think maybe geodate gets are kind of like that, but stuff like this with more uniqueness with water level bands in there, they're gonna be different if you cut it in different ways. And now the million dollar question, what do I do with all of those cut pieces? I could polish them, that would take forever, or I could maybe leave them as they are and turn it into some sort of agate puzzle. And <laughs> that's actually a pretty funny idea. You could cut up a bunch of agates like that, and then they could be like a puzzle where you gotta get them back to the proper placement. That'd be kind of neat. But anyway, I think it was pretty cool getting to see inside it, getting to see like peace of mind for myself, because sometimes I'm like, what if I cut it another way? Would it have been better? Not with this one. I think it would have been perfect no matter what. But I do know, like I showed with that other one, cut it a different way, you're gonna miss the water level bands. And I guarantee you with all the cutting that I've done in the past, I've missed some different details. I'm just never gonna get to see it. Oh, it's fun, right? It's like a little bit of a gamble every time you cut it. But if you guys liked today's video, hit that like button and make sure you subscribe and follow for more. If you wanna see another video like this, let me know in the comment section. I am more than happy to do this kind of video again. I thought it was really fun, even though it was a little tricky to cut the pieces the way that we cut them. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.